trustees of pension schemes are required by law to set uh, objectives. That came into force in December 2019. So, what, so why is this relevant today? Well, you've got just over 12 months from that date, so that's January 2021, where you have to submit final compliance. Um, so really, trustees need to be starting to think about this from today and working with their advisors on a framework to measure. You know, we, we speak to trustees quite often in the market and all too, all too often they tell us that many of the objectives that were put in place were tabled by the investment consultant to start with. And I think you know, that is understandable given the timeframes in question, um, but we think it's important that trustees you know, look to maybe wider perspectives and seek expertise in this area um, as they start thinking through how they complete their requirements. Um, at BMO, we're uniquely placed in that we provide advice uh, within our fiduciary management offering. We also have a Dutch fiduciary management business, and the reason that's relevant is in the Netherlands, they started this approach of balanced scorecard over 10 years ago. Uh, and lastly, we're working with third-party evaluators like IC Select, uh, who are experts in this field, um, and we think it's a very important topic, and, and that's the reason we're educating trustee boards on this. The CMA requirements are that uh, trustees by law are required to set objectives for their advisors. So that includes both investment consultants and fiduciary managers. Um, and it, just a, a, a recap in terms of why did this come about in the first place? Well, in 2018 and, and a number of years leading up to that, the CMA conducted a thorough review of the investment consultancy and fiduciary management markets. And they found a number of problems. Uh, firstly, in terms of investment consultants, they saw that there were low levels of trustee engagement in selecting and monitoring investment consultants, and it was very hard to assess whether they were giving quality of advice. Uh, also, they found very low levels of turnover between consultancies. Um, secondly, within fiduciary managers, it tended to around you know, the selection process itself. Uh, a large number of mandates were awarded to um, fiduciary managers without a clear open tender process. Uh, there were also issues around uh, transparency in terms of performance and fees. Um, so the CMA set out a number of remedies in 2019 to help trustees. So focusing on the objectives here, so in terms of strategic objectives, the key things are that one um, overriding this is that the investment um, objectives of the pension scheme should be very much aligned to what the advisor is trying to do as well. Uh, it should be reviewed every three years. Um, it had to come into force in December 2019 and they had to be fully compliant by January 2021. The pensions regulator TPR guidance uh, sets out a, a number of things. So firstly, um, there should be a balanced scorecard. Um, secondly, the factors that are within that should be relevant to the scope of services. Um, and thirdly, you, you need to think about uh, factors that are uh, realizable, uh, actionable and measurable. And it's really not in the interest um, of the, uh, the guidance if the investment consultant or the fiduciary manager sets and monitors this. It really has to be the trustees taking ownership. And if you go back to you know, what the benefits are, the benefits are that you are looking to increase the level of engagement, uh, so trustees with their advisors, um, ultimately looking for better outcomes for members. Um, at the same time, it's about seeing you know, if there is poor performance or things that you can improve, being open to looking at other providers as well. Strategic investment objectives should be closely aligned to the pension scheme objectives, um, and they tend to be in two areas. So one, there are primary objectives and there are secondary ones. So the primary ones are really about meeting member of, you know, benefits. So you know, are, as a sponsor, are we able to meet the obligations. So there could be things like financial metrics, so you can look at the funding level. Um, are you able to achieve 
100% funded on a certain basis, it could be gilts plus a half, by 2030. And then monitoring relative to that over time and taking action when it needed. Um, secondary factors are drilling down into more detail, you know, looking at the attribution of some of those factors. So you know, looking at performance, both in terms of growth and matching, uh, looking at the costs, you know, how you implement the transition side of things, looking at the statement investment principles, other factors that could be important such as ESG. So it's really a, a combination of primary and secondary factors that you need to bring together and look to monitor on an ongoing basis. The TPR has set out guidance, they've given you a balanced scorecard template you can use. Uh, we've gone one step further, we've tried to put that into categories and break that down even further. Uh, so the, the key components are uh, financial performance, uh, advice, relationship and other factors which could be for example ESG. Um, and the allocation between those could vary. Um, the TPO has set out some guidance. Um, and I think we think that it, it's worthwhile the trustees spend some time looking through what's important for them and to agree what those are and set it accordingly. Uh, if we go into each of those in terms of what are the kind of components within that, so in terms of the uh, financial performance, so you'll be looking at the funding level, you'll be looking at growth matching performance, costs, implementation, those kinds of factors. Um, there's a, a lot of quantitative things there. There are qualitative factors as well. So if you look at advice, um, that's measuring the proactiveness of advice. Uh, you know, how, how much clarity is there in terms of oral and written communication? Um, how do you you know, how do you set the investment strategy? Is everyone, does everyone understand what's going on? How accountable are the advisors in this process? Um, relationship is, you know, understanding the trustees' needs and having appropriate training to help them in that respect. Uh, other factors will vary between schemes. So if you take the example of ESG, if that's particularly important to you, then it's important to have measurements in place. So you know, what are you doing in terms of the pension scheme? Is it adhering to corporate policies? Uh, are you looking at best practice in terms of the wider industry? So it's, it's, a, it's a combination of qualitative and quantitative factors that you put in here in the balance scorecard. Um, and you need to build out a framework in which you know, different stakeholders, whether it's trustees, um, corporate, other, others, could factor in so that you've got a framework for measuring as you go on. You need to start um, looking at the balance scorecard from now, um, putting out, you know, w agreeing what the factors are in detail, the allocations, and start engaging with your advisor. Um, one of the challenges in measuring success in general is that sometimes you can focus on the short term or you might focus on one or two factors without looking at everything. Um, and that, that can be counterproductive. We think this is a, a good start to start a dialogue. Um, and what you'll find is that if you can start early, you will have time to have a, you know, an informed discussion with your advisor as you, you know, come, to the, come towards the end of the year. Um, we think it would be prudent to agree or have some sort of draft ideas around what the final conclusion would look like towards the end of Q3, so September, October time, um, in advance of the January deadline. We recognise the importance of this topic and as such we're working with experts like IC Select in educating trustee boards. Um, you can find more information on our website. Uh, we have case studies uh, and also template balance scorecards you can download uh, or feel free to engage with us directly to help so that we can help you.